Okay, welcome back to Bayou Time. As you can see, uh, Lafourche Parish Sheriff's Office uh, recently arrested two people uh, in connection with a 16-year-old murder that occurred in South Lafourche. And uh, just wanted to, to kind of open the phone lines. And, you know, if you want to talk about that, feel free to do it. We, we saw a little bit of the press conference today, and we heard from Mrs. Terrebonne, who is one of the, uh, the granddaughters of, uh, of the victim, uh, Mrs. Boudreaux. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it was a tragedy, but uh, certainly a very class act in terms of uh, Mrs. Terrebonne's comments at that uh at that press conference again an arrest uh from a 16 year old uh murder in the la rose area uh miss enola boudreaux 73 years old at the time uh was murdered and there are the arrest of two individuals and i'll go ahead and give their names again in case you're just joining us uh arrested for first degree murder is sonny james gidry uh, and also as an accessory after the fact of first degree murder was arrested uh, his mother, uh, Diane Vining, Vining Billyot. And that occurred uh, today and it's certainly a big story in the area. And uh, you know, I guess it, you know, people can take comfort of the fact that the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office and I'm sure other law enforcement agencies around, but this is certainly evidence that the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office uh, never quits, and that's refreshing to know. Okay, thanks for calling, and welcome to Bayou Time. Hello. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. Hello, how you doing? All right. Good, thank you for calling. Who that? Yeah, who, look, I got my who that tie on. Yeah. I'm all ready. I got my who that tie. So you going to the game tomorrow night? I'm, I'm going to be at the game tomorrow night. All right. I'm yep. ready for some football. I'm ready for some football, and actually, I'm, I'm curious to see about some of the changes that they made at the Dome. Yeah, I want to uh, see how them rookies do, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're going to see most of the rookies and, uh, you know, the backups, but that's okay. Uh, oh, yeah, long yeah. as football. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's that time of year, and it's good. That's it. All right, Jimmy, you have a good night. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. All right. And then just to let you know, uh, Stan Gravois will be on a little later, and I'm sure in sports he's going to cover the Saints. The And actually there are several preseason games in the league starting tonight. So football, uh, at least the preseason of the NFL, is kicking off tonight. And Stan Gravois, I'm sure, will tell you a little bit about what's going on at the Saints camps and involving the Saints. So uh, that'll be on a little later in the program. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, thanks for calling. Uh, welcome to Bayou Time. Hi, Mr. Jimmy. I was just wanted to say that I'm glad to do a push parish solve this crime. I just wish St. Charles Parish would do the same thing like LaFouche Parish did. Okay. Well, I'm sure, you know, they, and I'm sure that they're trying, and uh, hopefully they'll get a break as well because it does take a break sometimes to – you know, somebody coming forward, but I understand your concern. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate uh, those comments as well. And I'm sure Sheriff Champagne up there in uh, Lafouche Parish is, uh, is certainly uh, doing whatever they can to, to solve any of those particular uh, cases in the St. In the St. Charles uh, Parish area. All right, let's go back to the phone line. Thanks for calling, and welcome to Bayou Time. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Hey, how are you? Oh, okay, I like your tie. Hey, you going to the football game tomorrow. Make sure you wear that grandbaby stat stone tomorrow. I'm a papa. Oh, yeah, there you go. Hey, I'm all for that, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, man, how's the baby doing, Jimmy? Oh, baby's doing fine. Mother's doing fine. Jason's doing fine. Uh, my wife's doing fine, and I'm doing fine. That's great. I'm glad to see you doing fine, at least. Yeah, I'm glad good. everybody's doing fine. Good, good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm proud of the Sheriff Weber and all. They did a good job on that case, man. Well, no, no, no question. I do want to say that everybody's, you know, presumed innocent until proven guilty, but at least there's an arrest. It's going to go through the court process, and that is great news. Uh, for the sheriff's office. Yeah, Jimmy, what I can't understand, how can another person kill another person for money? 
I couldn't do that for all the money in the world to the person, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. I, I can't see that, man. Uh, I, if I need money, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go ask somebody for something to help me out or something. I ain't going to go kill somebody for it. No, I mean, it, I, you know, I, it, I can't, I'm, I'm like you. I just can't get into that mindset. I mean, uh, neither I, me. Yeah, I, I just don't know what goes on and what causes people maybe to snap or whatever it is. I don't know. Jimmy, if I hit a poor animal on the road to kill an animal uh, on accident, I can't sleep at night. No, I, yeah, I'm horrified. I yeah. know. I agree with you. Man, I can't understand how they're going to kill another human being, man. Yeah. I can't. They, they must not have no conscience, Jimmy. Well, I, I, I would think that people who commit murder, uh, obviously, they have to have either no conscience uh, or, or something goes wrong or, you know, they just grow up and just, you know, yes, get, get on the wrong side. Yeah, you know what I want to say? I hate to see the price of gold go up. That's not good for the economy. Well, it's up pretty, uh, what, 1700 or so now? 18. 18, okay. Yeah, that's not good for the economy, man. Well, uh, no, usually that's where people uh, go to when the economy's bad. That's that makes where the people dollar go that. down. Dollar value go down. Well, it, it's, uh, what it does, of course, is, uh, it, you know, the economic situation, I mean, it's just not good. It causes more fear. People spend less, and it has kind of like a snowball effect. That's it. Jimmy, like I said one time, you might say I'm crazy by saying, do you get this economy better? What the government needs to do is get all them young people off of welfare, give them job training, and pay them a decent wage of $15 an hour. Then the government would benefit three ways on that. Yeah. They would benefit saving money on welfare checks, on food stamp. Then they would get tax money and Social Security money off of them checks. You know? Yeah. They would benefit that kind of way. I believe that would boost up the economy better after. Yeah, I know. Look, I <clears throat> I understand exactly what you're saying. Now, how much, you know, what's the minimum wage, what it should be in a competitive market? Uh, that, that's hard for me to determine, but, but, but I do agree with you in this sense. They need to have reform to where the uh, people who abuse the system, yeah. that's where we're having problems with people who abuse the system, and they need to be brought to justice, in my opinion. Yeah, you're right. Look, I don't want to hold you too long. I know okay. you got a bunch of all the calls. All the calls. I'm glad to see you doing good. Enjoy the football game. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Good. All right, good. I hope everybody enjoys that Saints game. That's for sure. Thanks for calling, and welcome to Buy Time. Hello? Hey, how are you? Thank you for calling the program. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Jimmy? I'm doing fine. Listen, I, I'm, the, I'm the fella that called you. Uh, last time you was on, and I was trying to make a point about I thought you somebody made, do I, I, somebody I thought, do something how it affect the whole family. I thought you made and, an excellent point, right? Look, do you see? Did you hear the passion of this lady? Sixteen years ago, she lost her grandmother. Right. You see, and now when it's go to court, she's going to have to relive that all over again. Well, that's right. Uh, and and, people, and, when people do things. They're just not doing it to themselves, they're doing it to other people too. Well, and that's a good point when you made it last time, and I think this is a good illustration of that point, uh, yeah. because like you say, they do have to go through it all, they have to relive it, uh, that's certainly uncomfortable. I know though that they want closure, they, they're glad you can tell from the arrest, but that's just part of the tragedy of the, you know, the uh, horrific crime like this. I, I, and I don't know if you ever seen this program. It come on channel 47, I think, True TV, about intervention, where they, they give you the life of a drug user, where they let them they use the drugs and everything. Right. And, they, uh, you know, the families be right there. Interview the family and right. they show what the family is going through and everything. I've seen it uh, Monday night it came on. And oh, I'm no, like, look, we, we see, I see it at the DA's office, at the district attorney's office, uh, you know, when, when I'm over there and uh, on duty and people come in and it's usually family members of somebody who's in jail for drugs and, you know, they're looking for, you know, some kind of avenue of hope. And, I mean, it's just a, it, it's a tragedy all the way around. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to make this part and I'm, I'm going to let you go. Sure. You know, uh, if, they, if they will allow... Uh, parents, if they can prove that their child is on drugs, they need to uh, let that parent be able to get, commit their child to some kind of drug program before they wind up dead or, or do something where, y you understand, oh. it's some kind of help. I know that they're going to look at, though, who's going to finance it. Right. Well, somebody, well, you know, they, they go to prison, somebody got to finance that. 
Well, you know, look, I, I, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, and, and that's what I know District Attorney Joe Waits in Terrebonne Parish has that very same thought that it's a lot better to put resources to try to prevent things and help people uh, before they get into that situation where they have to go to jail. And then sometimes uh, it's very difficult to turn somebody around. Plus, as you say, the cost involved in that. That's right. Yeah. So you have a good you have a good night. But uh, Thank people, you. When, when people do things, they just need to realize that they're not only doing it to themselves; they're doing it to their family members too. That's a great point. Thank you for uh, Thank you. bringing it up again. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I think the caller is absolutely right. I mean, this is a tragedy. Not only this crime, any time somebody has to go to jail. Just think of the consequences to everybody that loves that person or that is connected to that person that's in jail. I mean, it, it's a, it cast a very wide net over a lot of people. Thanks for calling. Welcome to Buy Time. Hi, yes, I'm calling uh, for about the uh, Lafourche uh, Yes. Thing. Yes, I would just like to say I am glad that they did catch him uh -huh. because this was my aunt. Okay, well, I appreciate you calling. And, uh, we, we're very sorry for the tragedy, and we hope, uh, you know, that uh, justice is done uh, when the case is all set. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for calling, and uh, we, uh, our condolences, are obviously, and our sorrow for you and your family for having to go back through it, uh, but at least knowing, it's got to be a good feeling knowing that the, the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office kept after it for 16 years and uh, finally made an arrest. Thanks for calling and welcome to Bite Time. Yes, good evening, Mr. Gates. Hey, how are you? All right, I'd just like to say that this is open phone, am, am I correct? Yes, it is. Okay, what I'd like to say is that uh, I've noticed in the, the, the majority of the churches, uh, not churches, but the uh, 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 white congregations, people say I might be racist, but facts are facts, that they're, uh, right now, they're so anti-Obama, they forgot to preach about Jesus Christ now. And they also, in these congregations, uh, I believe they have failed the community on abortion and other crimes and, and other sort of sins, and now they're trying to criminalize them. Okay, let me, have, let me ask a question, because you made a couple of points there, but let me just ask a question, because I go to church, uh, and my religion is Catholic, but I, I certainly uh, recognize that uh, you know there's no one only religion I mean you know faith is an inner thing but uh, in going to church I haven't in, I haven't heard one time uh, in the Catholic Church that they have criticized in any way President Obama okay I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna agree with you on that because I've, I haven't been attending Catholic Church okay. and I've never heard a Catholic bishop anybody to criticize the president okay. I, I, so I have to give you credit on that but but uh, uh, Jimmy Swagger called him an Antichrist on his show, his, his son. And but the point I'm saying, all those right-wing evangelical congregation, which is 99 percent of uh, 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 white or Cajun, is that they uh, uh, they want to criminalize these sins now, since they have failed in the community. They have really failed, so now they want to run for office. To criminalize now, what, but, but, I'm sorry. Well, I said, well, abortion. What they go oh. do when they criminalize abortion, they go put the doctor in, in, in jail and, who, and probably who, and whoever else. But the point I'm saying, they have failed the community, so now they go get into a position of authority and make it a, not only a sin, but a crime. But, but, so, but, but okay, I, well, I understand what you're saying, okay? And, and I appreciate you calling in and sharing your opinion. But for the longest of time, abortion up until 1973 was, in fact, illegal. And ever since Roe versus Wade, when the Supreme Court came out and said that the woman uh, in the first uh, trimester, I don't remember exactly what the wording was, had the right to choose. Ever since then, people who disagreed with that, there was a movement to try to go back to how the law was before. So I don't see it as some type of uh, failure on anybody's part. They're just, from what I, the anti-abortion movement, is trying to go back and have one case overturned, Roe versus Wade. Well, well, but, but Mr. Gates, uh, come on now. I know you're an attorney. You can get around these things. 
Hey, you can put a spin on it, but the point of it is... <laughs> I'm not spinning it. That's the facts. Okay, here's another fact. You, you can have your own opinion, but you can't have your facts. The facts is they're going to make it back to a crime again. Well, yeah, they right. They're going to they're gonna make it... They, they, if they can make it back to a crime again, then they can put you in jail for the sins. So right. if they can criminalize one sin, they can criminalize more. I just wonder why that 99% of these congregations that are that are Caucasian, not Catholic, I'm going to exclude the Catholics, that they are uh, they do more about anti-Obama than they do about pro-Christ. Well, and, and now and now they want to say, look, I want to, like Rick Perry, I want to, you know, Pat Robertson said the Lord called him. That didn't work. Jesse Jackson, uh, uh, the spirit man, that didn't work. And there was another, uh, who was that, Huckabee? Yeah. And that didn't work. Now, here come Rick Perry right here. They want us to secede from the United States. And right. said it more than twice. Okay, and final then, comment, because we got to move on. But final, make a final. I the politician wants to be Christians, and, and the Christians want to be politicians. All right. Thank you, for, thank you for calling. Appreciate the call. Uh, and I understand the caller's frustration on, on that. But, uh, you know, again, I, I, you know, I think he goes, in my opinion, uh, goes to make it a racial thing uh, as to all the white congregations. Uh, and like I said, I'm part of a white congregation, not totally white. The church that I go to has uh has different races that go but the majority uh quite frankly uh are white and, and never once has there been any criticism within the church at a service about the president of the united states thanks for calling welcome to bye time hi good evening jimmy hey how are you uh, i'm just fine uh christianity is colorblind and you know to criticize president obama you don't even have to mention his name uh, abortion is sin. You know, you've got a beautiful young granddaughter. You know, how much deader would she be if I killed her right now than if her mother had aborted her? Well, you know, that's the that's the heart of the debate, where life begins. And I, but you know, I, I I'm on your side on that debate. That's my opinion. Absolutely. And murder has traditionally been against the law for centuries and centuries and centuries on right. centuries. Right. So, you know, stealing is against the law. Well, the Bible says murder and stealing or theft is sin. And it's criminalized. So when someone commits an abortion, which is a murder, there's no problem biblically with it being criminalized. Right, and, 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 I, and you're right. But, but I don't equate criminalization with a sin. I, I, I separate the two. I think that the law and society has the power and the authority to outlaw, uh, you know, what, what they want to outlaw. And if it's because obviously there are probably sins that, that aren't illegal. Uh, in fact, I know that they are. And uh, but but that doesn't, you know, that's why I don't try to equate the two. Well, if you're disobedient to the government, then according to the scriptures, that's that would be a sin because uh well I, let me just pull pull something out of the you know the air and, and i haven't thought this out but i'll just pull it out the hat adultery uh it's obviously a sin but is they don't put people in jail for that so that's what i'm saying i just don't like to equate the two well actually in in biblical times they stoned well, someone well for adultery. We're, not, we're not in <laughs> biblical times so uh yes it is a sin and in fact adultery is uh, criminalized in some instances. Well, it, it could be, depending on so what, but, gen but generally speaking, some, it's not some, people don't go to jail for. Some things that are sins are uh, depending on the morality of the community that you live in, whether they are uh, ordinance ag right. against it or not. But yeah. for instance, uh, if you go to uh, the courthouse square and they got a sign that says keep off the grass, right. and you walk on the grass, it wouldn't be a sin to be walking on grass, but being the government has made a law against it, you're being disobedient. Yeah, I understand that, but I, again, I don't. You know, I like to take. I, I like to talk about what's illegal, and then in a separate conversation, talk about what's sinful. Well, I understand I, that. Yeah, but you know, back to uh, the racism. Uh, you know, as far as racism goes, racism got President Obama elected uh, in the exit polls from the the polls 
the black people voted for President Obama about 92, 94 percent. But but that's not unusual for well, them to vote for the Democratic Party that way. Well, it, it was that's higher than they would normally vote for Democrats. But, but by a know, small percentage, and, and by a small percentage. 92, 94 percent, Jimmy, that's extremely high. No, but, but, the I, white but, people, I, but well, let me make my point. Sure, the go White ahead. people voted for President Obama by about 50 percent. 50% for and 50% against. Uh, that, that, now, that's a correct and a good point. So, you know, to say that the white people are, are prejudiced against President Obama is just factually inaccurate. I don't think it's about race. I think it's no. about ideology, and I think it's about right. economics right now. And like I said it, when I came on, for a uh, person to preach against President Obama, he doesn't even have to mention his name. Right. Homosexuality is a sin according to the scripture and you know the the churches preach against sin all right so when uh, a preacher preaches against homosexuality one of the first things that president obama did was to uh go to the website at the white house update the website to support the gay transgendered lesbian and bisexual uh, uh, association in our agenda all right. Okay. I understand so, your point. Look, we got to go to a break. Okay. I thank you very much for calling. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. I understand your point. Uh, and and I, I, I agree with, uh, with this point that the caller just made in that uh, if, you know, I think the election of President Obama, uh, at least in my opinion, was because there wasn't uh, rampant racism throughout the country. And that's what allowed him, or at least enabled him, uh, you know, to get elected. And uh, so I, I, I really don't, and I, this is just my opinion again, I don't think that the critics of President Obama, the overwhelming majority, is a racial thing. I think it's, a, it's an economic and it's an ideology thing. And, uh, you know, but still, even after all that, uh, President Obama is going to have a decent chance and probably better than 50-50 chance of getting reelected. On that note, we need to take a break. We'll be right back.